based upon defending ourselves and, and keeping safe, and also how to deal with people and relationships before it even becomes a case where we could become a victim. Because a lot of times, if we don't recognize the danger signs ahead of time, we might let someone in our lives influence us or uh, batter us emotionally. Usually there's a feeling out process before a punch is thrown. They feel you out, an acquaintance like we talked about with the officer. Many times it's someone that we know. They see what kind of a victim they have, how easy they'll have a chance to uh, victimize us. And it's usually because they in their lives were hurt at some point, and they're revisiting that upon us. So a couple things to look for when we talk about. One, obviously just pay attention. In all combative martial arts styles, there is not one that doesn't say pay attention. Because you can't be zoning out, looking around over here. Whether it's wrestling, boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and all the good styles train, I've got to pay attention because I'm going to get hit. You can't really zone out. That's one reason I love martial arts. I may have a terrible day at work, working with someone I don't really like, or working with a customer who's frustrating. I come into here and these guys try and punch me. I walk out of here feeling a lot better. That stuff doesn't matter because we're replicating where he's maybe going to hurt or harm me, and I've got to be really focused in the moment. You also need to trust your instincts. A really great book is by uh, Gavin De Becker, is an author who specializes in basically trusting yourself. Your brain has reasons it, it gives you warning signs. Science. Sometimes subconsciously. Sometimes our brain recognizes things that we don't really know consciously. And I had one example. Um, I was driving home uh, from work one day, and I turned on this corner, and I saw in the distance some figures walking down the road. <coughs> and I instantly felt jealousy. And I can't tell you why. I didn't think there was any reason for me to feel jealous. And I thought, no, what? why am I feeling jealousy? That's weird. I drove a little closer, and I could see some figures. And there was a man and a woman and two kids. And I drove a little closer and realized those are my kids, and that's my wife, and that's a guy I don't recognize. My brain recognized that from a block away. This feeling of jealousy came up, and I talked myself out of it, no, that's not them. As I drove closer, it was our neighbor, who I actually did know, and he was giving our kids some, uh, some toys that his kids are too old for now. Very benign, it was fine, but my brain recognized that and brought the emotion up before my thinking process could get involved. So Gavin De Becker's point is, if you're go like going to an elevator and you're about to get on, and that elevator door opens and there's someone there that you don't really like. Someone that doesn't look trustworthy to you or you wouldn't want to be alone with in a steel box you know, where they could hit the stop button and get you to themselves. Feel free to say, oh, I'm waiting for some friends. In our culture, especially for women, we train you to try and be polite. Don't make anyone mad. Be polite. Be nice. But it's okay to growl and hurt someone's feelings because, hey, you have to protect yourself. So that's Gavin Becker's point. And he really goes through it in great detail in his book um, called The Gift of Fear. And it really is a powerful gift. Fear can make you pull that anger out, as Christy talked about. Um, small boundaries matter. If I'm in a relationship with someone or talking to them, and uh, they don't respect my small boundaries, maybe I tell you, I don't want you taking that, you know, my games. Okay, I'd rather you know, not borrow them. And he does anyway. Or I say, I'd rather you not come into my room when I'm not home. And he does anyway. This maybe is showing me he's not a trustworthy person, and I need to get him out of my life or get a lock on my door, because this is the guy that might not... You necessarily. <laughs> this is the person that might be stealing my things or ripping me off or think it's okay to get me drunk and, you know, get me to hurt myself in some stupid way. You know, that's not a trustworthy person to be involved with. So small boundaries are little warning signs and see if they choose to cross them or not cross them. Um, if you're not in control of yourself, there's no way you can be in control of the situation. Uh, one reason I asked the officer about alcohol and drugs is that many times people are involved in situations where they're not quite themselves because they've taken a substance that changes how they think and process information. But at the time you're taking it, you often feel, yeah, I'm just as fast. I'm just as in control. Uh, and you're not. Your reactions are slower and you're making worse decisions. So sometimes it's important you know, not to involve yourself with the kind of people that, that would uh, do that sort of thing. If you are imbibing substances, especially as an adult and you're of legal drinking age, um, make sure you do it with people you trust. You know, do it places you trust, people who are going to look out for you. That's really important, especially for young women uh, in our society, but young men too. You can get in a lot of trouble with people who are like, yeah, take another one, take another shot, and then pretty soon you're in over your head. And then you walk home and drown. <laughs> yeah. yeah and Just happened in Stevens Point, right? That's happened three times in the past uh, couple of months yeah. in Wisconsin. It used to happen in La Crosse, now it's happening in Stevens Point. <laughs> um, third to last point. We talked about defending yourself, our personal space, our person. This is important. This is worth defending. So it's okay to be strong and to be solid. But what you carry in your wallet is not worth it. One thing we'll talk about in our class, if you're going to go to an area where you think there's crime, we have a fake wallet. Put a bunch of dollar bills in there, maybe an old video store card you don't need. And when they ask you for your money, you throw it that way and you run the other way. 
Because if he comes after me, I know it's not about the wallet anymore. Uh, same thing with a purse. You can have a fake purse. You can have fake money shoved into the visor of your car. Someone comes to the door with a gun, car door. Maybe your brain, the part of your brain that protects all your stuff goes, I don't want to give him my money. But if you've got this fake little wad of dollar bills, you can go, hey, man, here you go. Okay, and then you drive away and you have a much better day than if you had stopped to fight for your stuff. Uh, we do some drills in our class, scenario training. And a female student, probably not much bigger than you, and I probably weigh you by 100 or more pounds, and she also didn't have much martial arts training, kind of just enough to get into trouble where you start to feel like you could do some techniques. And in the scenario, I had her walk across the room, and I was over there where her gym bag was. And I walked over to it, and I started opening up her gym bag. And what does she do? Hey, what are you doing? Like it's a movie, right? And she walks over, what are you doing with my stuff? She doesn't have a gun on her, doesn't have police backup, doesn't have a director to stop the movie at the right time. So I turn and look at her, and I pull out a fake training knife, like, I'm going to stab you if you come near me. What does she do? She walks towards me. Terribly wrong move, but it's very understandable. It's very natural. I'm defending my stuff. And as we talked about it later, she came in my space and I, you know, did some techniques and she couldn't defend against it. We talked about it. I said, unless there was like a baby in that bag, there's no way you should have stepped towards me. You should have run. But it's, this is not to denigrate her. This is human nature. We want to defend our stuff. And you have to think it through and practice. What would I do if I looked outside and someone's in my car? Okay, maybe if there's a baby in there, yes, run and fight. But if there's just your stuff in the car, maybe yell down to them, but stay in the house. Call the police. You know, make the right choices. And police officers will practice scenario training. They'll rehearse things in their minds over and over. And that makes them much more likely to um, succeed, you know, when they see a bank robbery happen or they see a purse snatching. So rehearse things in your mind. What if someone came into your house? What if the back door got kicked in? If no one else is home, you should go out the opposite door on the other side of the house. Don't be a hero. You know, even Jean-Claude Van Damme isn't going to be able to fight guys with a shotgun. I remember a story of Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee's son. He had an armed intruder in his house, and they both grabbed knives, and they're running around, around the kitchen table. He said it was just ridiculous. He had years of martial arts training. His dad was Bruce Lee. And still, it just turned into this crazy circus of people blundering around and getting mildly cut. Uh, last thing, after the event, this is something a lot of times people don't talk about. After you have defended yourself, there's a couple things you should do. One, I would say, write down everything that happened. Not necessarily, you know, work with the police, obviously, but write down in your memory exactly what happened, the order of events, what led up to you using physical self-protection. Because later, your mind will play tricks on you, you'll remember things differently. Someone will ask a certain question, and you won't remember quite how it happened. So if your own notes, write things down. Keep a journal. You may need it with your lawyer. You might win the criminal case, where they're trying you, and they say, yep, self-defense, that was great. I knew a guy, a friend of a friend, he uh, fought someone in a bar. Absolute stranger came up, smashed a, b a bottle, you know, tried to cut him with it, cut the guy, the friend went and knocked him down and he fell and hurt himself. The guy, the attacker, the bad guy, the stranger, he lost the criminal case, this guy defended himself, but he won the court case. Civil suit. Civil suit. This guy, the good guy, had to pay for the, for the uh, hospital bills. And the reason, there was only one reason, he used more force than was necessary. He stopped the attack, but then he went and hit him a couple more times. And so the judge said, that's not a reasonable amount of force. You need to only use what's necessary to defend yourself and, and kind of leave. So that's really important. We also might have some trauma and some stress. Last story I swear today, there was a, um, some gun forms I used to go to. And on this gun form, a police officer said he was off duty. He was with his girlfriend at the time. And this is down in Arizona. There were some guys who would come in vans and actually try and snatch people off the streets. And they were trying to take his, his uh, girlfriend. So he, off duty police officer, pulls his Glock. He shot all three of them, and he was well trained. He was a good shot. Shot and killed them all. They're down over there. She is a registered nurse, a very good, compassionate person. She went over to check on them afterwards, and what she saw so traumatized her afterwards, and so you know scared her seeing someone actually injured and, and dead on the street, that it changed her life forever. He would. He doesn't regret it. He wasn't about to let her get kidnapped, but they should have immediately gone into some kind of counseling. He said their relationship was never the same. They broke up. Um, so when someone really gets injured and you're responsible, because we're all here pretty good people, we don't normally think about being predators and harming and victimizing people, there might be some emotions you have to deal with. So I'd say seek out a good person that you could talk to about that uh, traumatic stress. Even as the complete good guy, totally in the right, you know, and you take someone's eyeball out, you might regret it later. So that's it. Any questions on that? All right, I'm turning over to Mr. Garrett to finish up, and then we'll have some Q&A then. Thank you guys very much.